Right, so what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Hammers Fans United and welcome back, Kieran. Um, it's been a minute. I haven't been online, really. And thankfully, I can sit down with you, which, you know, I enjoy doing. Um, Europa League semi-final tomorrow or today for you. Um, yeah. What's your thoughts on tomorrow's game or today's game, whenever this goes out? Mate, it's exciting, isn't it, mate? We're in a semi-final of a European competition. It's uh, a bit weird. It's uh, a little bit surreal. But I was, um, uh, trepidation is my biggest fault because we're that close to a final. And uh, I think it's great for any team. and uh, Any final you get to is such a great thing for the fans and the club. But when you lose in a semi-final... No one remembers that, mate. It's devastating, isn't it? Yeah. And we've got two chances. We've got two chances to get there. So, it, nothing's going to be decided tonight for me. It's all going to come down to, uh, you know, over two legs. So, what we need to do, like um, Leon and Seville, is stay in the leg. Especially mm -hmm. Leon. When we're playing at home first, we've got to be, we've got to be in that uh in the second leg, we need to be competing. So we can't be silly. We can't give away goals. And that's something we're not doing under Moyes. We we very rarely concede two goals, do we? No. So I'm fairly confident that we're not going to give them too much. we just got to be on the front foot as well at home, you know, and to score. We need to be scoring. So it is... Um, and you just hope it doesn't boil down to a bloody referee's decision or a VAR that just sort of scuppers your chances. So, yeah, it's a, it's a nervous time, isn't it? I'm really nervous. Um, would you be more confident for the, you know, the two legs if we had Zuma and um, Ogbonna? Oh, for sure. For sure. I, I think... Before Ogbonna got injured, especially, he, he was in the form of his life. Mm -hmm. I thought he was one of our best players. I thought he should have been hammered a year last year. Yeah. And uh, I think he continued that on when he started this season. I just like him. He's just, he's dependable. Yeah. And um, we're lucky that, you know, Dawson, since um, Zuma went out, Dawson has stepped up, mate. I thought he'd done great for us, but he had a he had a mistake in him nearly every game, one big mistake. Sometimes, most of the time, he got away with it. But lately, I, I, I'd put a bet on, if you went back in that last five games, Dawson has been man of the match for nearly all of them. Yeah. Nearly all of them. He, he really has stepped up to another level, as well as he was doing. So, would I be happier if one of them were back, or Bonner or Zuma? Yeah, I would. Now, Diop going. I mean, that's just bizarre, isn't it? Diop going as well. And you yeah. go, just as Diop was, Diop had, had put a couple of great performances in too, just as he was getting good. You mm. think, yeah, this is the Diop we've all been waiting for. Exactly. He gets, he go, he gets injured and you go, oh, fuck's sake, what's going on? But yeah, he's it, it, a bit nervy only having one fit centre half out of four. It, it, you know, it's not healthy. All right, so um, if you can, you give me your preferred starting team, your formation, your tactics as a manager that you think, if you was David Moyes, what you would go into this first leg against them with our limitations in regards to the people that's not there, what would you do? Not what you think Moyes would do. What would you do in order to try and get a win? We need a win, I think. But yeah, what would you do? Formation, tactics, and yeah. lineup. <clears throat> the only thing that worries me about Frankfurt is they are a counter-attacking side and they play free at the back. And probably similar to us. And and that worries me. I'd rather have a team that were coming at us all the time and for us to counter-attack. Mm. And uh, because we find it hard to break teams down like, you know, the Burnleys and Watfords of this team when they're sitting back. But I think he's going to be forced. I think um, Chelsea was a rehearsal for this game of, of formation for Moyes. Yeah. And he was probably right 
I think uh, he'll probably play three at the back himself, which basically means five at the back when they've got the ball. You know, yeah. you know that's what it is. So I think he'll go again. It's most of the team picks itself, but that back three, obviously, you start with Dawson, and you're going to have Creswell. I mean, it'd be Dawson, Creswell, and then one other. And I think it looks like it has to be Johnson. So, and uh, against Chelsea, the boy done really well. I think yep. he had a really good game, mate, to be thrown in there. Against Chelsea, now, they know, you know, there's some serious, quick, brilliant players in that Chelsea team. And um, I thought he acquitted himself really, really well. Had a great mm. game. And like I said with Johnson, I think he's... He probably plays better uh, in that back three because uh, he's not the best going forward. But yeah. as a defender, he's fucking, he's pretty solid, you know. Yeah. Most of the time, he's really solid and he's getting better. So that back three would, for me, be uh, Cresswell, Dawson, and Johnson. And I, you know, the, then I'd go Soufal to give us more of an, an attacking threat. Soufal is the right wing back, and uh, Fournells is the left wing back. So you'd have Fournau as left wing back, yeah? Yeah. And, and then you, you sue check and Rice. And then we've got left Bowen, Antonio, Lanzini. Yeah. Five, three, two. Yeah. That would be your team, yeah? Yeah. that That's what I'd go with tomorrow, yeah. Now, obviously, which I'm stating the obvious, is when you pick that team, in theory, we've got nothing on the bench. Not to, much, no. To change the game. No. So, we are... Oh, well, we've got the guy that's meant to change the game, Ben Rama, and he never does. Right. So, uh, I'm, I've sort of uh, given up with him now because uh, he just disappoints me every week he comes on or he even starts. Yeah. I thought he was at, I thought against Chelsea, he was our worst player on the team. He was. I thought the team was really well. He was the one that was the only one that, to me, was below average. Mm. Uh and disappointing and frustrating. So you'd like to think Ben Rama is the guy to bring on. You know, it's a shame he isn't because I think if he had been on serious form against Chelsea, I think we could have won it. We could have done. Like, we definitely could have so took weak. the lead and and then yeah. yeah, I really do. But he's just not. You know, he's just reminded me too much of, of Felipe Anderson when you know what that boy can do when he's on fire, mm. and he was the same. He was frustrating. Frustrating, frustrating. He come off the bench, still not producing that bit of magic or something to win you a game or get you a goal, get you in front. He wasn't doing it, and uh, I find this. I'm finding the same feelings with Ben Rama. It just disappoints me nearly every time. So, so. my point is this: <laughs> if we're gonna win, let's say, let's say we're gonna get through this semi final, like as in both legs, we're gonna have to do it really with eleven players, aren't we? Well, you are really, you know, you, you, Jan Malenko is not going to come on and win you it unless, you know, unless you get lucky. It's just, yeah, what have we got? What have we got? Who, who's going to come on and do anything? We've we got defenders to bring on, maybe, you know. He doesn't use Crow, so that is pointless being even on the bench. Yeah. He doesn't use it. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have a couple of young lads there, and we, we know Moyes is not, not one to throw young lads in willy nilly, is he? He's uh, very careful with the young boys, and I don't think he'd throw him into a game that big. So the bench, we're probably going to have another couple of goalkeepers on there, do you think? Because who who do you rely on off, off the bench? Exactly. You know, this is what Ben Rama should be that. He should be. Mm. It should be. You should be getting excited when that boy's coming on for the last yeah. half hour. Yeah. And and you know, I'm not myself. You know, just nah. me. I'm, I'm just not, not anymore. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not expecting anything. And yeah, you know, really and truly, a player like that should be your trump card. That when he comes on, the other team is petrified. Yeah. And it gives us a boost. But yeah, we just we just haven't got anything from the bench, which. If we it's get through there. this tie, like I just think, you know, it's already a massive achievement for West Ham to be where we are. Um, but if we get, you know, further than if we do get to the final, then 
David Moyes oh. is a magician because, you know, everything that's Absolutely. gone on, lack of signings, lack of um, options, even when everybody is fit in regards to forward options. Um, I don't know if any team's ever sort of got this far with such bare bones. I don't, you understand? I can't think mm -hmm. of a team in any sort of European competition. No, it's pretty remarkable, really, to think about it, isn't it? Mm. You know, pretty and remarkable, you know, what Bowen, we've got. Bowen missed the two severe legs, obviously, and we still got through that. Mm. And, you know, on paper, that was the toughest tie. So I'd ask you this, and do you, <laughs> do you think the luck is with West Ham and it's written in the stars? Oh, no, I can't, I can't. I can't dream that far ahead. My, like me, my Wednesday I'm head won't let me dream <clears throat> that if we if we're gonna get through, it ain't gonna be nothing to do with luck. It's gonna be sheer hard work and scoring a goal at the right time. Mm. If we we could not go through from bad luck, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I don't think it's gonna be down to luck with us. I think it's uh, Moises, like I said. Everyone was disappointed in January that we didn't bring some kind of cover to strengthen the bench, if nothing else. Right? That this is where I think uh, when Moyes is going on about, you know, I can't bring a player not better than you know any of the players out there. But that isn't the point. The point is to me have someone, people on the bench that maybe can come yeah. on and do your job. And he didn't do that, right? So we're not. None of us are happy about it, and we flagged him off. But that's done, dusted. He's hung his hat on that he thinks he can get through with this squad of players that he's got. Now, it's hard to judge him until the end of the season, isn't it? Yeah. If he, by some miracle, gets to that final, <laughs> right, and then wins it, fuck it. What, what can you say? Can you still slag him off? Probably. You can still say, well, he still should have brought someone yeah, in. Yeah, I, right? would, I would say that. Yeah. I would be lying. And you'd, you'd be right to but he's backed himself to do it about that. And you go, well, fair enough. But let's say, if, if we go out of this semi-final and then, you know, we end up eighth, then he's rightly going to be criticised. Yeah. Because uh, it's cost us in, in both competitions. Yeah. And no European football next season. Which the ramifications of that could be rice... The departure of Rice, it, you know, it's a big gamble. Mm. And uh, I'm not sure it's one he should have taken. I think he should have brought in, even if they weren't the perfect players for him, he should have brought someone in just to give us cover now. And But by the way, the last player I wanted was a centre-half. We yeah, had yeah, four. Yeah. You know what I mean? We had yeah, four exactly. of them. Yeah. So <laughs> that was the one place you thought, well, at least we're safe there. But obviously not. Right, so... You know, I was speaking to Ben at training today and I said, you know, I felt this is what he should have done. And this is not taking into consideration the centre-backs, what's happened. I said that what he could have done is, um, same thing what you just said. I said, maybe the West Ham have got a plan and the plan is determined on where we finish. You know, if we finish in the Champions League or Europa League, Rice stays. If we don't finish in Europe at all, Maybe we try and get top dollar for Rice and we do a rebuild. So I can understand that. Yeah. But I can't justify not making any signings. Now, without being disrespectful to Yarmolenko, we could have let him go on a free just to free up his wages. We could have got two loan signings. Now, let's say Yarmolenko's on 120. We could have got in £220,000 a week players, but only paid half of that, 60. So we're paying the same wages that we'd pay uh, Yarmolenko to two quality players, right? Yeah, yeah. Now... In theory, you know, a striker who is going to somehow work as hard as Antonio and, you know, offer what he does just as backup. And I said a defensive midfielder that could maybe, maybe double up as a centre-back. But someone, because obviously if Rice or Sujic's injured, who do we put in there? So those are the two spots because centre-back, we were fine. We had, you know, we was, mm. uh, well, Obono was out, so we wasn't perfectly fine. And Diop was in bad form. So... Potentially, a centre, a defensive midfielder that can play centre back might have been the perfect loan signing and a striker. Now, I don't know what's your thoughts on that. Like, what would you have done no, that, in general? That's true, but the weird part about that is, I, I presume that's what Crow was brought here for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't it? 
And he yeah. was that because he has played centre half. That's where he started out. He is a yeah. defensive defensive midfielder. He's the perfect candidate. But I don't know what he's doing in training, Jason, because uh, he's just not interested in him giving him a game at all. I mean, Absolutely. at all. You know, when we're down to the bare bones, that boy's not getting on. And he's exactly. not starting. He didn't even start in well. that Chelsea. That Chelsea lineup. he didn't start. Exactly. That, to me, that if you were ever going to play him, that would have been it. He could have played him centre-off. Yeah. You know, you, you, or, you know, you could have or dropped Rice in there, which I never want to do. But you could have dropped Rice in, played him the defensive midfielder or make him centre-off. He, he weren't interested in it. Never even came on. He's never going to play him. I just yeah. don't see the point in that signing unless, you know... Moyes looked at him at training and went, Jesus Christ, what the fuck have I brought in here? Because yeah. to not get a sniff you know, all this time makes you wonder what was the point. Uh, he must have been really disappointed in him. Because you know, he, he's had the opportunities. He's had games where he could have played them and he, and he won. So, right. So that was, yeah, it was a bit weird, isn't it? Because like you said, a defensive midfielder come centre-half is what he could have brought in. But he already had it in crowd. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but it won't. He won't do it. Right. Only so, boys can tell you why he won't play. But um, I think we can. Yeah, we know. We saw him against Kidderminster, and he was terrible. Yeah, sure. You know, terrible. Now, as an internet, I know West Ham weren't great, but I'm saying he was really bad. Um, <laughs> yeah, he was. Right. So, what I wanted to do with this more so. Because we played Frankfurt in 1976, what I want to do is, I'm going to have to edit out so that I can put myself smaller. Right, what I want to do, Kieran, is take you down, and then you're going to, you know, you're going to give me some knowledge on this. I'm going to take you down memory lane, right? And let me, well. and this is why I couldn't wait to sit down with you, um, and I'm going to put this behind me. So, um, we're going to speak about what do you remember uh, about this game specifically? You know, the second leg where West Ham won 3-1. I'm going to ask you about all of the players that started and all of that. But what do you remember about this game? I don't know how much you can see on your screen because I know you're on your phone. I've got, I'm on a bigger screen. Yeah. So I can see. Oh, mate, I remember a fair bit. Uh, I remember being in the, some reason, I normally was either usually in the chicken run or, or the North Bank. And for whatever reason, I ended up in the, the west side of West Ham watching that game. My, all my memories are from watching it from there. Yeah. And, uh, oh, man, we we had to win by two clear goals. And we went through on the away's rule there, on the away rule, rolling then. You know, we had to beat them 3-1. But I remember Trevor Brooking just, he was just a master class in that game. He was yeah. so good. He, he was brilliant and he scored two goals and one with a header. I remember yeah. that, which is unusual for him. But he done it there, which was massive. And then he done it in the FA Cup final in 80. Um, there's not many headers he's got. But that day, the, the, the last goal, the third goal, when he when he cut inside and... They're going to shot that, now. Look, it's behind me. Bang. It's right behind me now. He's, that, that was I Keith Robson. Yeah, that that oh. was Keith Robson's banger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's behind me now. What it. like that was. But I was out of nowhere. It looked like he cocked it up when he got the ball. Like he had a bad touch and he just pulled it to the side and smashed it. Yeah. It was such a, a cracking goal. But what and uh, Brooking does his one where he just cuts inside yeah. on his right foot. And this is now. it here, mate. Right now, he yeah. does the defender. That's the one. And then bang. See you later, son. What a, the place erupted. I've never West. This was the best night I've ever had under the lights at Upton Park. It always has been, and I think most people that were there will tell you that it was an absolute banger. But typical West Ham, we, we're three 0 up, we're coasting, we give them a goal. Right, <laughs> so we got a, we got to bite our nails to the end. Hmm. We we made it three one because if they score again, they're through. Yeah. As simple as that, because we're just getting through on away goals. But we, we gave them that goal, so we uh, had to worry about it. But we did. It was a great night. It was a great game. Brooklyn was just a masterclass. On that pitch, I mean, it was a lot of beach in the penalty areas. There was that much sand there. It was an absolute mud heap of a pitch. But West Ham played brilliantly and deserved it. 
really good. And a good um, side too, they were Frankfurt. Good Frankfurt, side, yeah. Right. So, um, in, in regards to the pitch, you know, I can't read this here, but at the bottom of you, it says terrific Trevor. So I heard it and it says, you know, Brook in the master as hammer zip to final. But they did mention the pitch, you know, early into that report as, you know, it wasn't did the greatest I... of service. Yeah. Um, no, I can't read that. It's way too small. Um, right. So, so hold on a minute. I thought the first leg was 2 1 to Frankfurt. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but the, the thing is, if they um, was it two one? We was lost two one. We got an away goal. Yeah. So so the, yeah, the thing was when it went to three one. Uh, if they made um, it three two, if they made it three two, they go through on the away goals, don't they? Yeah. Not exactly. That, yes, that that's what they would have scored two at our ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. We were, if they scored again, we're out. We're out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. So we, yeah, we lost 2 1, um, I think. And then yeah. that means that that I was 4 3. But if they would have got an extra goal, then it would have been 4 They got the goal. They, yeah, that, that's one through. thing. On the pitch. I knew if they'd scored, we're gone. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, even though it, it, they would have gone through on the away goal, that's right. It's not that we did. Yeah. It was right. that. Yeah. So True. after they, they made it 3 1, this says here, uh, Bev Rungun, I don't know if I, he scored on 87 minutes. Um, mm. how much stoppage time was there in in you know in in 1976? And was did they have any other chances after that consolation goal, which is what it turned out to God, be? I can't remember that. I look. But the thing is, back then, she never knew how long. It was whenever yeah. the referee oh. blew his bloody whistle. Oh, you know, okay. there was none of this oh, yeah. three minutes. <laughs> none of that. You you just whatever the referee thought about when he felt like blowing his whistle. That's what he was down to. <laughs> oh shit. You know, so you can imagine the noise of, you know, screaming at that referee to fucking blow the whistle, you know, and uh, you just didn't never knew. But yeah, they came at us hard after that. And once they scored that goal, yeah, and, and so it was probably the longest five minutes of your life, you know, with a bit of injury time and whatever. Really, really <laughs> now by him. But, but what a night, mate. But like that, I said, that, no, that was your best. Night at Upton Park, yeah, ever, yeah, without a doubt. And there's been some great ones under the lights there, as you know, but that one was really special, really, really special. Because even before that, the, the quarter final, who was that? Den Haag, that was a brilliant night, and this one surpassed it. I think it was Den Haag we beat. I'm not, I yeah, don't know, Den Haag, I tell you, well, if you ever look back on that, mate. The quarterfinal was amazing because uh, we went out there, went 4 0 down. Oh, my at God. Half time, right? 4 0 down at half time. I think I that's know. the one. And then we scored two goals in the second half, make it 4 2. And I think we might, at Upton Park, I think we beat them 2 0 and went through on the away goals. Oh, gosh. I think that's how that one worked out. But that was, that was the best night ever at Upton Park. Until yeah, this yeah. one. Until this one, yeah. <laughs> so you, you, know, you so, were there for both of those games. Yeah. And I can't remember much about the, the Den Haag one because I've probably never seen it since. You know, what, what jerks your memory. When I see things like that now yeah, and again, yeah, yeah. I probably yeah. did that a couple of years ago. Yeah. And it jerks your memory of the night. Yeah. But because the quarterfinal was just a quarterfinal, you never see that. I should actually look it up and watch it again. Because that was brilliant too. What a comeback that down, was. man. That's Four crazy. Down at half time, out there. Yeah. And then we got like, them, them two goals in the second half saved the last. Because we went through then on the away goals. All we, right. I so, pretty sure it was 2 0. Yeah. Who's right? And I don't know the answer. Who scored in the 4 2 game and who scored in the 2 0 game for us? Well, like, I can't remember. Can't remember. No. 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 I'd have to watch it again and go, oh, yeah, that's the goal I remember. I really can't remember. I just remember this one really well because uh, when Keith, I love Keith Robson. He was a real yeah. good, hard, hard jewelry boy. Well, I'll, we're going to get to that. I'm going to go through this lineup, and I want you to tell me about these players. So, yeah, um, we, yeah, we're going to go from Mervyn Day onwards. So that's the next thing that I want to do. I want you to like let me know about all of these players. Um, as far as I'm aware, they had a chance. Bef at nil nil, didn't they in this game here? Um, and we cleared it off the line, was it maybe? Oh, mate. 
we we probably we d- we done that every game. Yeah, it looked like it looked like. Look, this might be coming up now. <laughs> look, look, look. There you go, Bosch, off the line, yeah. and then look here, off the line. Look at that. That, that was like right. they saved it. Then there was a blot, and then there was one on the line. That was at nil nil, and here's Brooklyn. Yeah, mate. So yeah, you know. See the way he fucked it up his touch. It was shit because of the pitch and then bang. Yeah, look at that. Goal. Keith Robson. That's Keith Robson, mate. His left foot. Fucking get hold of that. Look at that. Oh, man, the place erupted. Erupted with that goal. It came out of nothing. You know, it just came how many, out of nothing. How many people do you think was there if you was to guess? I'm guessing it'd been been about that thirty eight thousand. You know, yeah. full you know. It's about the maximum is. capacity back then. But yeah. you've got to remember as well, Jake, we're all standing. You know, this is when football was really good. Everyone was standing, mate. Mm. You know? Everyone was standing. It just created a better atmosphere for me when you had it all, you know, standing. You know, the, the west side up top was seating. The chicken run up top was seating. And that was it. Everything Everyone else in the ground was standing. And yeah. it just made for a better atmosphere. It really did. Do you think it's a bit poetic that, you know, our first semi-final since that European is against the same opponents? Yeah, it is, eh? It's a little bit of deja vu there. I, I mean, think so, shit, yeah. Frankfurt again. Um, but, what, what? again, I wish we'd been playing out there Away first. first. Yeah. yeah, I really do. Because, like I said, we, we knew, West Ham knew in that game what to do, what they yeah. had to do. Yeah, and uh, they know they needed at least two goals. If you know, if they if they score one, then it's all on going to extra time and then replay. There's no penalty shootouts then, so um, I don't think there was. Maybe there was. I can't remember now. But once we scored that third, great. You know, the game was in the bag. But when they got that one goal, you went, oh no, no, no. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> We could be out just like that if they get another one, you know. It was scary. But Mervyn Day was pretty solid, you know. Yeah. Really, really, he had a good game, mate. He was good. All right. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the lineup, and you're going to tell me about, not just on the night, but just, you know, those players generally, like your thoughts on those players. So um, I've heard of Mervyn Day. Um, but, yeah, you let me know what type of goalkeeper was Mervyn Day. Hey, explain to me... You know, yeah. your thoughts on Mervyn Day. And how long was he at West Ham for? Oh, quite a few years there, mate. Couldn't tell you how long. A long but, time, uh, Yeah. When he started off, mate, we, he was really well liked, is for one. You know, he was like a baby-faced goalkeeper and um, everyone loved him. And at the beginning, he was, he was like a cat, you know. They used to call him the cat after Peter Bonetti at Chelsea, because that was his nickname. Yeah, yeah. He's made fantastic saves, mate. And uh, he was really, really, really good. And after but after a while, he seen the tail off. I'd heard at the time maybe his father died, mm. and uh, he just went out of form. You know, you, you know, might have been a couple of years later, but he really did go out of form and lost his sort of mojo a bit. But at the beginning there, and in this era here, he was a fabulous goalkeeper. Really good for West Ham. And uh, and I, it's funny when you ever look back at them videos and you see you see them little thin cotton gloves yeah, they yeah, were gloves. wearing. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Not these big padded things like they got nowadays, but you go, well, it's really weird. Um, but yeah, he was a great keeper, mate, and he was really well liked at West Ham. Really well liked. Loved him. Um, before we move on, right, in 1976, I might be wrong, but I swear some keepers chose not to wear any gloves, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, really weird. Because right. that wasn't yeah. like way before that. That was around this time where they just didn't wear any gloves. I mean, I've I've, worn, I've put them cotton gloves on before myself when, yeah, you know, on Sunday game, we're missing a keeper, I've jumped in and they'll... And it, you might as well be barehanded. For yeah, yeah. Exactly. Plus, they're slippery as well. They're probably. I think that's why they wore bare hands because they're cotton, so they will yeah. slip a bit. Well, they got wet, not. and then they were soggy and wet. You oh, know, you mate. couldn't dry. Yeah, they were really crap. But yeah, yeah, it's a weird thing, eh? You think about just yeah, a, that, that, that a was wearing like gloves. exactly. Yeah. Um, 
Right, so on my screen here, we have Coleman, who I'm assuming is a right back. I don't know his first name. So you're going to, is he a right back? What's his name? And tell me about Coleman. Which, yeah, Coleman on the, 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 the left back. Oh, he must be left back then. All right. It's, yeah, I'm just putting it. I normally go. From, think, oh, all right. I so think, Coleman's a left back, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, great play. Never uh, made it massive at West Ham, Coleman. But uh, yeah, good, solid player for us. Uh, yeah, he's not one. I don't remember that much about him to be honest. Search mm. that long ago. Uh, Coleman, what's his first name? Forgot his first name. I can check it here because it's there. It's just got his surname. Let me check for you. Um, I'll tell you. One minute. Um, recent because it's Coleman. This is the thing. I don't think. Uh, Keith. Was he Keith, playing that? Keith Coleman. Keith Coleman. That's it. But he's playing left back in that game. I don't know. I'm just looking at this. Um, yeah, that's a bit. But make sure. Be. So I'm guessing. Um, now I'm just trying to think about who might have been injured. Is Frank Lampard in the team? Yeah, yeah, he's there. No, oh, maybe he's playing right back then. Keith Coleman. Yeah, that's what I, I was thinking. Think, I, I was expecting you to say John McDowell. So I'm wondering he played, he played as well. McDowell played. I'm just trying to think where Keith Coleman was then. Was he playing centre off? All right, let me go for the lineup first, and it might so, refresh yeah. your memory. Right, so we've yeah. got we've got Mervyn Day, we've got Coleman, Lampard, Bonds, Tommy Taylor, McDowell, Holland, Padden, Jennings, Brookin, and Kay Robson. Yeah. So we must have had two Robsons then, if they specify. Yeah. Keith Coleman weren't a, a massive mainstay, I don't think, at West Ham. I mean, he was there, right? You know, obviously, Tommy Taylor was there for years and years, a brilliant centre-off. But, yeah, it's hard to get much of a memory of Keith Coleman, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I remember him, but uh, I don't think he was a massive player for West Ham. And I'm, try, I'm trying to wonder whether he was, he was a first-team pick all the time at that time. Maybe he was. But yeah, he's one that they're probably the only player in that team that I'm not, that you're got not a great too familiar team. with. Yeah, All right. But I remember okay. him. I remember him. You remember but... his name? Yeah, but not too much. All right, mm. let's move on to next on this list, which is Frank Lampard Senior. You tell me all about him and yeah, his style of play and and all of that. Yeah, like Frank Lampard. But he, he was uh, he was the Julian Dix of the of the time. You know, like it's a hammer of a left foot. Mm. Hammer of a left foot, mate. Strong, and I reckon I reckon he was uh, in his time at West Ham. He was probably overshadowed by Billy Bonds, yeah, because Billy Bonds was Mister West Ham, if you like, but Lampard was too, and uh, Bonds really got that sort of uh, credit for being that. Where Lampard was just as quiet guy, really softly spoken when he ever saw an interview of him, or weren't, weren't very often. And uh, but on the pitch, hard as 100 percenter, not the quickest in the world, but a cracking left foot, scored some great goals with that left foot, and uh, yeah, a really well liked player yeah. at West Ham, Frank Lampard Senior, really well liked. Um, he played for England, didn't he? He did get a, a cap or two, yeah, not, not too many times though, no, one, two, or three, something like that, he got for England. Yeah. Which was, you know, that's why everyone couldn't understand why Bonds didn't. I think Billy Bonds got did get picked for England, but got injured. Yeah, yeah. Uh, before yeah. and couldn't couldn't go. All right. So my next question is this: You just said that Frank Lampard Senior was loved at the club. Then obviously, mm. you know, him and Harry uh, were running the club or running yeah. the team, and then you know Frank Junior came through. You know, with all of that being said. Do you feel that West Ham have treated Frank Lampard Jr. harshly, considering at, all things considered? At that time, absolutely. Absolutely. The, the, I don't know why the, the fan base never took to him, whether they feared that, that his inclusion was, you know, nepotism. Yeah. Uh, because, like I say, Frank, you know, when you look, when you've got likes of Harry Redknapp standing up in a press conference and saying, mate, this boy is going to be one of the best players ever. Yeah, you know he defend, but yeah, you know, I think the the fan base was was uh, wrong at that time. 
to give him mm. stick, and they did give him stick. So what yeah. everyone tells you, there would have been fans of him, you know, there would have been people defending him, but a big majority were were against him, yeah. and for every reason. He always looked a bit chubby, and you know, like yeah, a bit chubby, right? and they slagged him off because his weight. And, but the boy was trying hard, man, and he was a a good player. He just yeah. nothing really exceptional at that time, but he was coming. He was. This is why I always worry about these kids when you throw them into that into that arena. It can ruin them. Yeah, it actually made Frank Lamar Junior. stronger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when he's you see, when he starts going, when he went to Chelsea and then he comes back, starts kissing badges and yeah, yeah, and exactly. like that, then yeah. I, I can understand the stick he gets them. But I don't think we were very fair on him. We should have been because yeah. his dad, his dad was the ultimate excellent servant for West Ham. Yeah, Frank Lampard Senior was the ultimate professional, and uh, I think it was unfair on the, on him at that time. Myself. Yeah, so you know. It kind of epitomizes society, I believe. And, you know, some people, they, they're quick to forget. And, you know, yeah. by all accounts, you'll say, look, it was, Frank Senior was a nice guy, you know, West Ham through and through, gave it all for the club. But yet, you know, yeah. his son is getting sticked. You understand? Like, that's the type it of time. Should, when, exactly. Yeah, when you should think, make allowances yeah. because of who his dad is in that instance people, as a young son. Like people like myself that, had, you know, lived through that, Frank Lampard senior era, they wouldn't have been the ones slagging him off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. It would have people that didn't realise what Frank Lampard senior had done for us. Yeah, and uh, that it didn't matter that he was his son. It, it, it did matter. Of course, mate. You should should have been proud of the fact that his son is playing for us. Yeah, and and look what he went on to achieve for fuck's sake. Exactly. Like, you know what I mean? It, it, we, we could have kept him if everyone had got on his side, but no. Everyone wanted to be a fucking horrible bastard to him, and he ended up gone. Yeah. No, there's more reason to it than that. Of course. But still, you know what I mean? That that they should have been screaming his name from the fucking rafters. The fact that he was a uh, Frank Lampard Senior's son. Exactly. Okay, yeah. right. So the next player on this list is Billy Bonds. Now, yeah, he was average, average guys. <laughs> <laughs> Right, <laughs> there's not much you can say about Billy Bonds, mate. He, you know, if you want to call Mark Noble Mr. West Ham, well, Billy Bonds is Mr. West Ham Plus. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. That's what he was. He was yeah. just an unbelievable player, absolutely ruthless, and um, he was just like a, a warrior on the pitch. And another guy. Very mild mannered guy, very shy man in his home life. Never went out drinking with anyone. He weren't into the drinking culture. He used to train. He was directly the hardest trainer at West Ham. He would train more than anyone else. He'd run faster more than anyone else. And when they finished, he was off home to yeah. his family. That was his sort of life. The opposite of what you thought he would be if you just watched him on the pitch because he yeah. was such a warrior. Hell he was so. You yeah. look like you think. Yeah. You think no, he'd, he'd finish a game, then go and do ten points and have a fight in the pub. That's yeah. what you sort of the impression you'd see of him. But he weren't. He was the actual opposite of of his persona on the pitch. So everyone loved Billy. Billy was that was my first pose. I took my two, I had two posters on my wall. The first one was Bobby Moore, and the second one was Billy Bob. Yeah. So he he was the man. Yeah. You know, you, you want to grit in your team, leaderish, yeah, leader qualities. He was it, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Brilliant. Now, we all I remember, him. you know, as a youngster, he was still playing for West Ham. So I was familiar, you know, football weren't on a lot on the TV, but I was familiar, you know, somewhat of, of um, Billy yeah. Bonds. But some of these players, obviously, no, I wasn't. But, you know, Billy Bonds, was, he was still playing when I was, you know, old enough yeah, to I remember. Think he... Yeah, was he 43, I think, when he played exactly. his last time? Right, so he played, yeah. Which, I don't know, it would have been 80-something that he, he maybe retired. might have been early. It wasn't 1990 when he stopped playing, though, was it? It might have been, you know. It would have been, mate. Yeah, yeah. So, sure. yeah. so I was familiar with, with um, Billy Bonds. Right, so, did he ever play midfield? Yeah. Yes, but centre-back yeah, as well uh, sometimes. 
he played right back. I think when we first signed him, I think he was fifty thousand pounds from Charlton or something, and uh, he, he uh, I think he played right back. I think he, you'll see early games of him. He's wearing a number two shirt. He played right back, then center up, center half. He played center midfield. He was everywhere, Bodge. It's really hard to say. Right, he's just that. Because I thought you I remembered that. him as a centre midfielder, but you know, obviously he played yeah. centre back as well, didn't he? he? He played everywhere. He played fucking anywhere. And even when he was centre midfielder or centre, you see him. In, if you see old highlights, you can see him out in the right wing, and you'll see him up, you know, backing up the strikers. He was yeah, yeah. Everywhere. everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, okay, so we move on to Tommy Taylor, who I am not familiar with. The name, yes, but I'm not familiar. He was an out and out yeah, centre back, yeah. Good old centre half, you know. If you want it, if you want a, oh, in the modern day, even a, a Dawson, you can stick him. You can probably compare him to Dawson. Yeah. Old fashioned centre half, fucking solid as mate. Worked brilliant. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, you know, you knew he worked brilliant and he had a mistake, but mate, he, again, uh, what West Ham was built on was was graft. A bit like what Moyes is trying to do with his team now. Hard work. And he was a hard working centre half, mate. He'd put his head in anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere needed to go, he'd put his head in there. And uh, yeah, he was he was a like player. But it was one of them like you go, oh Tommy, what have you done there, mate? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but everyone knew his uh frout was here and there, but still loved him, you know. And uh, I think he uh Tommy done a, a great job for West Ham, mate. And he played he was there a long, long time, Tommy. Yeah. A long, long time. Uh, I don't know how many years he, how many games he had under his belt, but uh, it would have been a lot because he, he was always constant in my growing up in that area. You know, say Ooh, yeah. in, in this game, I was 15 years of age, you know, and he just been seemed to have been there forever, even then, you know. Yeah. All right. So McDowell, what's his first name and what position does he play? And tell me about him because I don't know. Yeah, McDowell. Yeah. John McDowell was a right back and a great player. Yeah. Curly hair, mate. He had his mop of curly hair. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you knew John for. And I've, you very rarely ever see any interviews with him or anything. Very rare. Uh, I'd imagine he was another sort of quietish guy, but I don't really know. But, yeah, good right back for us, mate. Solid as, you know? Yeah. Because uh, you, you had Frank Lampard on the left. And you knew what you're getting from him and, and John McDowell on the right. He weren't the quickest or the most brilliant, but he was a good, solid right back, mate. Done well for West Ham. Sorry, Kieran. What I'm doing mate. is... He was a likeable character too. Everyone likes him. The image above you has got them in their positions, but I know it's going to be small on your thing. So I would just confirm. Yeah. I'm just going to confirm this. They, obviously, McDowell right back, Coleman, Tommy Taylor centre back, and Lampard left back. So that was the formation for the yeah. that was the lineup for the for this leg. So Bonds was in midfield for this. Um we've just said McDowell. All right, so we're gonna go to Pat Holland, who would have been the right midfield. Yeah. Patsy Holland, mate. I'll tell you what, you know, when you talk about players in the past and that are underrated, yeah, I think he comes under that category, Pat Holland. He was an underrated midfielder. Man, the boy was quality. He had great feet, mate. You know, he, he showed glimpses of Trevor Brooking at times with his feet. Work, man, that boy is another one all over the pitch. Yeah. Work back up the forwards, back up the defence. The boy was a great player, mate. Another really well-liked player, Patsy. Seemed quiet in his demeanour. Uh, but man, his work rate was fabulous. And I reckon if you talk to any of them old players that day, I think they'd say the same. He's so underrated as a midfielder. He was superb. A great player for us. How long was Love he Pat. at West Ham, roughly? Was it a long time or yeah, not? Yeah, fair, quite a few years, mate. Yeah, quite a yeah. few years. So he's another one that there a while. Perhaps he was there, uh, yeah, quite a while. All mate. right. Yeah, he ain't no pie, yet, but I'll tell you what, when you when you need someone, when it, you know you're in the trenches, you want people like him. Yeah. Wait, one sec. This guy hasn't got a name on his picture, so he oh shit. All right. Um I don't know who this one is. What about Padden? What's his first name? And what position was he? Mate, he was Graham Padden. 
He was a left left sided mid yeah, midfielder. He's left has he got ginger hair or was that a fair? Well, mm. blonde, it was blondie, mousy coloured. Yeah, hair. that's the guy. Yeah, and he had a what's nine, his... a lovely seventies haircut. You know, the long, yes. long hair. The <laughs> what, what's right. his first name? Graham. Graham Padden. Okay, yeah, because they haven't got his name on this on here. What yeah, was he mate. like? Oh, I love Graham Padden. He was one of one of them. Uh, midfielders that you took to, you know, they went, well, fucking love it. I think we got him from Norwich. Okay. I think he came in from Norwich, right? And um, what a left foot. What a left foot. I thought Frank Lambard Sr. could hit one till I see this boy do it. And, mate, he could hit him from anywhere. I mean, anywhere. And it, it was a powerhouse of a shot. Wow. And a great player. Really, another one really well liked at the time. And I remember the what the one outstanding memory I've got of Graham Padden is uh, my very first away game. I think it was that it was 75. It was 1975. My first away game outside of London was uh, Wolves. Uh, and it was before this, I, I think, because I'm pretty sure it was 97, early in that season. And uh, I was only 14. And I went to Wolves. And uh, for some reason, there was some kind of deal, the TV strike or there was some dispute with the TV company. So there was no game being filmed. So this yeah. game was never filmed. It was never, there's only photos of it. And uh, we uh, went there and we beat them 1-0. And it was great. My first away game out of London, we won 1-0. Little as I know, that was probably not going to be many more. But <laughs> I... Uh, he hit a shot, and I'm not joking this, Stitch. If anyone that was there at that game will tell you this. From the halfway line, he hit. And, I, and I'm not talking to David Beckham chip over yeah, the keeper. Yeah, he whacked it. I'm talking about a thunderbolt, and it hit the top corner. What is it? with power. Uh, what a goal. Oh, what my a, days. That was, the winning, that was the winning goal, and I've never forgotten that moment because we just couldn't believe it. It was a pretty shit game, if what I remember. You know, it wasn't a great, exciting game. But this shot out of nowhere from the halfway line, hitting the top corner, that was and, the highlight. And it weren't bloody recorded either. That Not recorded. I've seen a photo of it since with the goalkeeper at full stretch trying to stop it. That's all I've seen of it. And it, it's hitting the top corner with pace. That's how hard that boy could hit a ball. Them balls as well. Yeah, I was about Back to say. Then. I was about to say, those balls... Um, and and you're saying it's noticeable power. You can see these people can hit the ball. So what can they do in this in this day and age with these you know these these balls and and you know even the pitches is a lot better on the on the surface. Yeah, no, <laughs> these balls would be too light for them. They probably have too much power. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't be. They'd be, they'd be hitting the fucking rose head, wouldn't they? With these things. Be, because it's, the yeah. fuck you hit <laughs> but you know the good thing is, it's it's a good thing in some respects that. It wasn't filmed because you, for you, you was there. You saw that. You know, not not yeah. many people actually saw that. And you know, that's no. that folk, folklore that you saw that particular goal. Because you know, but it's my first real experience of uh, West Ham being out of London, right? Because I'd been to Arsenal and Tottenham before that. But I, we were at the the away end that you're meant to be in, and all of a sudden, at the, the home end, it weren't full up, and it's a massive grand old Molyneux. It's huge. Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden, you see up what's going on up there at the other end, and all of the wall supporters started running from the middle where they're behind the goal. Yeah. And it was about fifty or sixty West Ham fans had got in there. Oh, and they was running for them. Started their shit right, and yeah. having a pop at them, right. And then he, then they see all the police run in there, and then they they walked all the West Ham fans out of there down the pitch and threw them in. Into yeah. the end, we were in where they're meant to be. Oh my god, <laughs> to, to great applause! To my head. Oh my, <laughs> yeah, that was my first experience with that sort of thing happening. I mean, fuck you know, yeah, anyway, it's just um, a side note for that guy. Yeah. But well done, Graham, mate. Graham Green, played hey. a wonder day. All famous. right, so let me just try and get his name before I say it if I can find it. One sec, tell me about. Billy Jennings, and they've got him here as one of the strikers, so but not here in this photo here. Billy Jennings. Billy Jennings, yeah. He was one of really small guy, mate. Had a funny run on him, Billy Jennings. 
forget where we got him from. <coughs> but, uh, yeah, he was well liked. Good player, mate. Really small, sort of like a Tony Cotty esque sort of size, you know? And uh, really, really pretty looking boy. Like, his always hair was never out of place. Yeah. It was a bit weird. <laughs> it was, uh, um, I think he used a lot of fucking uh, hairspray. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, one, but a good player, mate. Again, I, I remember my the first time I went to Newcastle, Billy Jennings playing, and uh, he scored the goal, mate. And I in that game, I was in the wrong end pitch. At <laughs> Newcastle, yeah. yeah. And he scored. No, just oh, you fucker. I better not uh, do that. Yeah, yeah, not that. Yeah. <laughs> um, you get bloody killed up there. Mm. Uh, but yeah, we lost anyway. But I remember him scoring that goal. But Billy was a good player for us. Good good striker, mate. He was a poacher, a real poacher. You know what I mean? Anything, he weren't, you know, he weren't one of your solid, big, headed balls or nothing like that. But he was a real poacher. Yeah. And he could score goals like Cotty as well, you know. Just being yeah. there at the right place at the right time and nicking it. You know, I, I don't remember him scoring many from outside the box. Put it that way. He was definitely a poacher. Was he another one that was at West Ham a while? It's, you know, as far as you can remember. Yeah. I'll tell you, yeah, it was there a fair while because I met him from that age. I'll tell you, been there at least four years. I'm guessing, completely yeah. guessing. But yeah, you know, I've got a lot of memories of him, so I'd imagine he was there quite a while. Yeah. All right. So they thankfully on here they've left the two goal scorers to last. So I want to get this guy's. Um... All right, it's not here. K. Robson, who he scored that great goal, yeah. Mm. And I'm assuming he's left footed because he scored with his left foot. So that was another yeah. left footer in the team. Yeah, he's a left footer that played on the right. And he hit a banger. Right. So Yeah, he was great. What's his first name? Keith? Keith, yeah. Okay, Keith Robson. Um, once again, memories of him. Mm. My memories of him, he was a fucking nutcase. Oh, is hard it? As <laughs> he was hard as nails, right? A real big, uh, strong Geordie boy. Didn't. You know I mean he'd tackle anything? I remember him headbutting a player once and got sent off for it. <laughs> right, because the geezer squared up to him, and he just fucking put a nut on him. <laughs> right. yeah. He was hard, mate. And when, of course, West Ham, you know, you already had Billy Bonds, who was hard as nails. And then at this boy turned up, people loved him for that, you know, because yeah. he was so fucking hard. Man. He'd tackle anything. He'd, oh, he'd leave the studs in, he'd take people from their knees. He's really hard tackling for him. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and you get away with a lot more back then. I don't think it'd last long now, but uh, but he had a hell of a shot on him, mate. And uh, he was a great player. Yeah. He was a good player. But, yeah, he, he, I think I think there's an interview with him once where he said he, he when he came down south, he just thought everyone, you know, in training soft. and that weren't tackling hard enough. Oh, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. yeah. Too soft. Yeah. From where he came from, he's, he's just too soft. Here. He went right. Oh, that's a show. <laughs> How I do it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. yeah, good boy, Keith. Was he well liked? Was he with West Ham? You know, a decent amount of time as well. Not a massive amount. No, I, at least I say a couple of seasons at least, but not massive years. You know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hard to remember that, mate. He's just. <laughs> Yeah, back then you never took notice of players that were there for you know, yeah, how yeah, long they yeah. were there for how many times they played. Just what yeah, you know, it was just something you weren't that bothered about. It just when they're in the team, he was well liked because he was so tough, like and yeah, he yeah. just knew. Yeah. I goals. mean, it, even if he got sent off, mate, he'd get a fucking round of applause from everyone. It'd be a rush. Yeah, get in there, Keith. You've done it. <laughs> got sent off. So what? Well done. Delighted. Oh my God. Was delighted. That's funny. <laughs> All right. So. Finally, and I know this was not no hard nut or, you know, he was, as far as I'm aware, you know, he was a clean cut guy. And that was Trevor Brooking. Yeah, Trevor. Mate. mate, I don't know. Describe Trevor. It's one of the best players West Ham's ever had. He's up there, you know, in the top five of West Ham players they've ever had. He's in it. Mm. So he's graceful on the pitch. And again, we go back to the, it's really hard to people understand how bad them pitches were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and to glide over them the way he did with the ball, you know, on a, you just didn't know how far it was going. He did how far the ball was going to stop in the mud, 
But he just had this knack of carrying a ball and make it skip along, skip along. He was so good at it, mate. And uh, just had all the technical ability in the world. Just such a great player. And uh, in that game, I think one, that's one of the best games he ever had for us. And it's that goal here where he cuts inside that defender and bangs it. Just around the keeper. I mean, that got us to the final. Yeah, I was going to say, that, that was the third goal. Was, yeah. That got us to the final. That 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 was so important. But what a player. Just, he, he, does say that. he is a legend for me. That's, that's a proper legend, you know. Yeah. Played all his career at, at, at West Ham. And at the time, what used to really annoy me about the, the fucking media and, and the newspapers is that they'd always favour in the papers, in the back page, you know, Glenn Hoddle over mm. Brooklyn. You yeah. know, Glenn Hoddle, not another great player. Yeah, I love him. He, he, he was a great player. He, he did a 50-yard pass, Glenn Hoddle, and put it on you know, on a dime. Yeah. And Brooklyn do the same. But Hoddle always seemed to get the headlines more so than Brooklyn, mm. which was really annoying. Yeah. And uh, so, <clears throat> but Hoddle was another great player. And both of them were competing you know, to be in England, England, in yeah. England team, and uh, and when Brooking got picked for England, he, him and Kevin Keegan had a great understanding, and uh, there was a, quite a few goals that Keegan scored, you know, with Brooking's help, with assists and that. They they really had a great understanding how to play together. So Trevor Brooking, mate, was yeah, he was our star midfielder. Yeah. He was super. Love him. So. Uh, a few questions regarding Trevor Brookin. Um, why do you think he stayed at West Ham his whole career? Like, was he, you know, was there other offers? And they must have been if he was, you know, England, in, yeah, all of that. I don't know if there was, but it had to have been. It had to have been. Yeah. Because the boy was outstanding, you know what I mean? So, he, him and Hoddle, to me, were the two best midfielders in the country. Right. You know, when it comes to skill and... Uh, they, too bad, even though, they, and there was a lot of good ones around at that time, believe me, loads of them. And uh, you know, Rodney Marsh and Stan Bowles, and but the, they, they were the two best. So, I'd imagine he had offers why it never went anywhere. I don't know, I, don't, I really don't know what, what, how we ended up with him. I'm not sure. Yeah, I say he could have gone to any club he would have fitted in. Like you, we talk about Rice now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He could he could go in any team. He could play for Man City. He could play for Man United. He could play for Chelsea. Play for Liverpool. Yeah, he wouldn't be out of place. Yeah. Well, Brooklyn would be the same. same as them, Brooklyn yeah. would not have been out of place in any any other team. Uh, you know, if Man United at that time were were strong or Liverpool that was strong, he wouldn't have been out of place in any of them. So I don't know. Yeah, you know, I suppose only he can answer that. Where he just never interested, happy to be there all his life, but he was. And thankfully for West Ham, obviously. Yeah, thankfully for us, because like I say, five years after or four years after this, he scores the winner in the FA Cup final. Exactly. So, um, just briefly, what was the score in the final of this competition in 1976? Oh, we lost to. Uh, Andelect, didn't we? And what? what and was that, score? I think uh, three nil, something like that. Oh, okay. I was going to say the score, but obviously we three, or three score. one, maybe three one. Oh, yes, fuck me, I should have. No, I would rack my brain on that one then. Uh, but yeah, I remember say a mistake by Frank Lampard that got got him the first goal. I think or. And we were chasing it at the end. They got one right at the death. You know, it was one of them. But um, it, it say a mistake, but the boy was injured. Yeah. Lampard was injured, and uh, he, he lost the ball and he couldn't run. So yeah. I forget what he'd done now, whether it was a groin or whatever. And I think he only had, I think he only had one substitution back then. I it? think it was, if yeah, if any, but yeah, I think maybe one. one. So I'm not sure if we'd already made the substitution then, or no, we no, we did. I think we took him off. But yeah, that cost us it. But uh, yeah, it was one of them. Good side too, and Lennon. Like, yeah. Um, the time, also, was... also on Brooking, you know, he's another one that when I was younger, he was still playing. So you know, I knew Trevor Brooking and all of that. And not, I wasn't mm. familiar. If you were to compare him to anybody in sort of world football today, whether it's in the Premier League or 
who would you sort of compare him to to give me a better understanding of his abilities or his style? Do you know, it's really in this area, it's really hard to to compare some. Um, some of the trickiest midfielders I've noticed recently are, are smaller guys, but really, really quick. Yeah. Trevor weren't that quick. It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> His yeah. brain was. Yeah. His, his brain was, but uh, <clears throat> he was just sell play players dummies, mate. He had this great technique of letting the ball come to him like he was going to touch it and just let it run past him. Mm. He wouldn't even touch the ball and he'd leave the player on his ass. You know, yeah. he wouldn't even touch the ball. He just His body shape was that he was and then he'd, he'd roll and, and let the ball go past him and walk away with it. He'd done yeah. it so often. Uh, I tell you, anyone in today's game... But, there isn't a West Ham player that compares at the moment anything like him. Mm. Um, really, yes. That's a tough one. Man. Yeah, don't. If, if, you know, if no one springs to mind, then, you know, that means he was... That type yeah. of player, the way he was, because he's a tall guy as well, you know, and um, he was so graceful on the pitch without being fast. It's just his feet in the pink. A great crosser of a ball, too, yeah. to pick out a player from, and a great passer. But, yeah, it's really hard in this modern-day game to, to compare someone to it because you see these midfielders now that are running up, running back, you know, all this like Rice has to do or yeah. up front. He wasn't necessarily about that. He just walked around the pitch, picked up the ball and done damage. Yeah. So it really is hard to compare to a modern-day midfielder. All right. And one more thing on, on Trevor Brookin. And I'm going to go back to Ben Rama because... You know, back in the day, there was tough players, but Brooklyn wasn't. But was it ever noticeable that he would shirk challenges or, or you oh, know? No. He, no. No, he weren't, he weren't known for he being hard or nothing, but she, he'd put in a tackle. Right. He'd go in wherever it was needed. No. Yeah. I mean, no players got away with shirking tackles back then. I didn't think so, yeah. Because, just... They didn't, because it, the old adage back then was, mate, if you go, go in there 40% instead of 100 you're, you're, you're the one getting that. Exactly. You know, so it was drilled into you. If there's an attack will be made, you go as hard as you can. Yeah. And you'd rather hurt him than you being hurt. That was part of it. Yeah. You know? So, no, Brooklyn would put in a tackle, mate. He weren't known for it, but he, yeah. he had no problem yeah. doing it. Yeah, yeah, which is obviously, yeah, that's, I mean, that is the minimum. But in this day and age, man, I see a lot of, you know, there are players that are tentative and, and you know, they don't want to get hurt. You understand? Yeah. Too many. I've seen too a few many. players recently doing that. A few players, yeah. a few different teams pulling out of tackles like where they could have won the ball, but decided not to. Okay, right. Now, this is going to, because it's going to do the same to me. Um, I'm going to do it anyway because I can already feel it. We are now going to go come back to 2022. Like, that was, you know, for me, that was nostalgic for you more so, because you was there. Um, <laughs> so, um, like I said, just now, um, when I wasn't on camera, I was so looking forward to sitting down with you because I knew you'd been to the game um, and I knew that you would, you know, give me a better insight into the atmosphere the game, the players and all that. So, yeah, I was really looking forward to to doing this. Um, but now we've come full circle back to today and it is it will be today that we're playing this game. Um, yeah. Would you take uh, a free one West Ham? <laughs> Just like that night there, would you take a free one West Ham tonight? I, yeah, I think uh, a two-goal advantage would be fantastic to go to any, any ground away in Europe. Yeah. If you've got two goals up, right, that, that's it. I think mean, that's what Frankfurt will be trying to stop. You know what I mean? Yeah. They'll, they'll be happy to come here and get a draw and walk away or nick it 1-0. They'll be happy to do that. But Leon were happy to do that. They thought they'd done a you know, one edge, got the point, right? So got back to there. We had our left back sent off and uh, we absolutely destroyed them. Yeah. And uh, so I just wonder whether they will be satisfied, Frankfurt, coming here and taking a draw. That I think they'll take it, but 
they might be more dangerous than we think. I think they might be trying to win this game mm. before we get to the second leg. So it is worrying because this, what I've read and seen bits of this Kostic, he looks like some hell of a player. Uh, on the left, left wing, uh, got shitloads of assists. Yeah. And, um, but they are, they are definitely a team, all their eggs in one basket too now, right? Because yeah. that's all they care about. They're mid-table, 10th or whatever in the Bundesliga. A league that's already been won by Bayern Munich, yeah, by the yeah, way. Yeah, that's done. That's done. So that's done. That's they've got nothing to play for in that. They don't really care. All they care about is this. So, yep. you know, the stakes are high. So, they'll be coming at us. And apparently, when they're like I say, another counter-attacking team. and But when they counter-attack, they attack in numbers, serious mm. numbers. They throw lots of people at it. You know, five coming at you yeah. from their counter-attack. So, th they don't mind doing that. And then, uh, what well, I see a Frankfurt boy there on one of the shows. They're saying that when they don't have the ball, they're a bit like Liverpool. They hunt you in packs. Mm -hmm. They close, which that worries me. Exactly. Because yeah. we're not good at that. If we get pressed that hard, and we will give the ball up a lot, and uh, that is worrying because I, I don't think that's something we're good at. You watch no. Liverpool do it every week. When they lose the ball, mate, they just swarm swarm the opposition to get the ball back. And most of the time they do. Yeah. Now, not, not, without me seeing Frank, but I'm only going by what that boy's words were. He said, well, that's what they like to do. When they lose the ball, is swarm yeah. uh, players and make sure they get it back quick. So th that's worrying because I think we, we are vulnerable to that, you know, that press. We well, seem to give the ball a lot. You've just worried me a bit with that because <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. And yeah, you've no, also given me... You've worried me. Yeah, I'm exactly. Passing You're passing it on. But you've given me some hope that we could counter their counter. If they counter exactly. in numbers, then, you know, yeah, there might be a team that... Uh, <coughs> well, one down, of that boy's comments was, he said, a lot of the games you'll see at Frankfurt, it's like that. That end, that end, end, that end, that end. It happens a lot, he reckons. Mm. So... End to end fucking football. Both teams got a counter attacking. Nah. He said it happens quite a bit. So, uh, but that's where we, yeah. I, I was hoping there'd be more just come at us and then, then we counter attack. But apparently they like to counter attack, but in numbers, they like to press when they haven't got the ball. Uh, but like I say, if, if, if we can counter attack them, it's who, who finishes, isn't it? It's who's, yep. uh, who's the more clinical. And at home, we need to be more clinical than them. Because, yeah. like I said, we, we've been good at, at the back, really. Regardless of whatever the formation and the player, we don't let in that many goals. We, You know, it's very rarely a team scores two goals against us now. Yeah. You know, and if they do, they don't, you know, we score, we get at least one. So, I'm not expecting them to come and do us two or three nil. But... They will be making sure they, they come away with a result, I think, Frank. But they're going to be tough. Yeah. I think we beat them, though. I think mean, it's great. Even though I, went, I, I was, when I saw the Chelsea lineup, I went, oh, great. Yeah. But I think the boys done well against Chelsea, played well. Yeah. And Antonio got a, a great rest. You know, he's, exactly. He's had at least 10 days off now, hasn't he? So that, you know, I can see why he did it. Even in that last 20 minutes against Chelsea, I wanted Antonio you to come, to come on. on, didn't you? Yeah. I did go, come on, get him on. It's perfect for him. Counter attack yeah. Chelsea with him, it would have been me, but I understood why he didn't. Yeah. And uh, I went, no, maybe it's a good idea. All right, we lost one there. We were unlucky not to get a point, I think. Uh, but he's rested now. Bowen, more or less, he's the only come on for a short time. That ain't going to affect him. And Rice got a decent amount of rest, too. So. I'm hoping all them three boys are firing. So yeah. They're going to have to be. You know, yeah. the good thing was Wolves also lost 1 0. So there was mm. no change there. And, you know, seventh is still on, but I do feel that Wolves have a slight advantage over us because of their running. So, you know, yeah. we could easily, like you said during this show, we could easily finish eighth. And I mean, you think very much the same. I'm not. I'm not optimistic and I kind of do that just to protect myself, you know, like, uh, you know, kind of, but you know, I can't, I would love it, but I'm, I don't dare to dream that far forward, uh, even getting to the final, let alone winning it. Um, yeah. 
And yeah, just looking at Wolves' fixtures, if they win their game in hand, they go level on points with us, we've got maybe one or two better goal difference. But the running is, we've got City and Arsenal at home, which we're going to lose those games. And then we've got <coughs> Brighton and, and Norwich away. They've got some yeah. tough games in regards to Chelsea, City, and but they've got Brighton and Norwich at home. And I'm thinking our points will probably come from Brighton and Norwich, but they've got more chances yeah. of picking up more points because they're playing them at home. So... Yeah, yeah it's, I think it's going to go close, but I think we still can. I mean, if we could upset a team that we're not meant to, like an yeah, Arsenal yeah. or Man City, yeah. you know, we, we still could get six. I yeah. just wonder whether we will. Uh, I'd take seventh. Anything to get back in Europe again next year, I'm not bothered. Yeah. I mean, six would be fantastic. To win the Europa League would be the, the ultimate. I mean, of course it would. I love that because uh, even, I don't think we're ready for Champions League, right, at all. No. Right? no, we're near it unless we spend massively in the summer, which we're going to have to spend something. But um, but even if we did get in the Champions League, if you feel, feel, uh, finish third in that group, you end up back in a Europa League. Europa League, exactly. And then we go again. Yeah, exactly. Double yeah, fuck bubble. It. Fuck Champions League. <laughs> get back in Europa. We won that. Yeah, fuck we it. want we to want get back in there. there. So there's great incentives then, you know what I mean? So I wouldn't yeah. be too bothered about that because exactly. you have got that. As much as I disagree with it, dropping yeah. out of the Champions League in Europe, I'd never agree with it. But if if that was the case, all we've got to do is finish third in the group. I'm sure we could do that. And um, get into Europa and go and win it again. Exactly. That'd be lovely. So um, <laughs> before we finish, what the pitch underneath me, we won. What was the European trophy that we won? The Cup Winners' Cup. When? What year was that? Uh. So the 1964 one. Oh, 64, it must be in it. Yeah, 64, so that was... 65, whatever. That, yeah. that, that seems to me. So, yeah, just that, yeah, I know it's quite small on your screen, but do you like recall any of those players in that, you know, that are lifting that cup from that? I know it was a long I can't time. see the I can't see the picture properly, but uh, I, I, I do remember, yeah, I would remember something, all of them probably, oh, even okay. though I'm too yeah, young, too to young then. Then. Yeah, yeah, but you'll know when you've got I yeah. think maybe Ronnie Boyce and like what Sealy in goal or Sealy up front. I'd remember if I saw the yeah. names and that I could tell you, but I can't really see that picture properly. Well, you know, I put that picture in here because I'm thinking, you know, that was the European trophy. I'm just hoping it's a little bit of luck. I put Moyes yeah. and uh, <laughs> Rice next to that picture just to yeah, like no, as long yeah. as it as long as we're in the game in that in that second league. Exactly. Right? Whether, we, whether we win tomorrow, even lose one nil, or draw, whatever, we can't lose two and three nils. And you know, it's all over. Yeah. We've yeah. got to. We've got to stay in the leg, and if we can win it, which I'm fucking hoping we can, just surprise them. Mm. I, I'm hoping we shock them that they they're coming here thinking they've got it. Exactly. And not a problem. I'm hoping that's their attitude, and we we surprise them. And Antonio has another game of his life. Like I think he did against the. Uh, Leon, I Leon. thought he was fabulous yeah. in that second leg. I mean, without scoring a goal, he was fabulous. And that, that's what we need him to be. Yeah. Um, and hopefully, uh, Rice has a blinder and and Bowen does as well. And Bowen fucking bangs a couple in. That would be, it'd be lovely to to stick two or three past them. I mean, that would be the ultimate. Yeah. So when you go there, you know what I mean? All they got, all they can do then is attack you. Yeah. And that, I think, with, with our boys... We can defend, mate. If we have to sit deep, like we did against Chelsea the other day, we could. They really, I don't think they hardly bothered us. No, you they know? didn't. We can defend if we have yeah. to. And we can counter-attack too. So it would be nice, mate, to uh, get a win out of this game. I just hope we, we're up for it. And we will be up for it. There's no doubt about that. The players will be up for it. So I'm just uh, hoping Frankfurt a little bit too confident. Mm. And get a shock, a surprise. Get a shock. All right, finally, I just thought of this. I'm going to give you the choice of three players that took part in, you know, your favourite game or best game at Park, which was obviously the semi-final. And you're going to put them into today's lineup, considering the injuries, you know. So, you know what we're working with now. You bring in three players that win us the game. And, you know, who are you bringing them in for? Wow. Jesus, three players, three players. Oh, yeah, so no, no, um, you got you got you got to have Trevor Brooking in there, uh, yeah. 
That's a so, simple one. So Brooklyn. Who do in. I take out? Yeah, who do you take out I'll for Brooklyn? Brooklyn out for Lanzini. Okay. Right. And then I'd have Billy Bonds in there for Suchek. In midfield, yeah? Yeah. I'd okay. have him as our defensive along him. Billy Bonds next to Rice. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. a dream, isn't it? <laughs> lovely. So Brooklyn um, Bonds and then one more in, one out. One in, one out. Would you go Lampard because he's a left back? We ain't got. I oh, know we've got a left back. Sorry, it's the centre backs that we're lacking, isn't it? So you, yeah. Uh, what about uh, Coleman? No. John McDowell. Uh, oh no, I, think, oh, I can't. All right, think a, max, a maximum of two from that from that semi final heroics. Yeah. That, could you I'd find us? I'd like to have Graham Padden in there because he just hit a shot from anywhere and scored. Is be, that the like... left winger? Yeah, well, Graham Padden, no, yeah, central left. He, he's left footed. But, uh, yeah, I brought, I brought Padden in there for. Oh, I don't no. like dropping four now. Nah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where else to go. <laughs> Oh, no. Maybe, actually, I would. I'd probably bring Frank Lampard Sr. in for uh, Cresswell. Okay. That's, yeah. That's so Lampard, Brooking, and Bonds would be your. Yeah. Yeah. That'd and that would, free out. that would win us the game, wouldn't it? They, them three in, yeah. surely, would win us the game. Absolutely. Brooking will do it, mate. And Bonds, Bonds and Rice will stop anything coming through there. See? So, uh, yeah, not a problem. Sorted. Sorted. Um, Plus, I would waterlog the pitch first, right? Yeah. <laughs> so Brooklyn can play. That's yeah, a mud the up the pitch. Yeah, mud up, can scuff it up a bit. <laughs> we can only dream. Um, but yeah, um, you know, as always, thanks for anybody that's tuned into this video. Uh, thank you to Kieran. I've, you know, as always. But yeah, it was it was good for me to sit here and. You know, learn more about West Ham's history, basically. Um, <coughs> yeah, all I can say is, you know, good luck to the team tonight. And hopefully, like Kieran has said, we get uh, a result that keeps the tie open, preferably, you know, a win. But yeah, any final thoughts, Kieran? And then we will wrap this up, mate. No, to anyone that's going, mate, enjoy the night. Enjoy it because we enjoyed it back then when we, we were playing well when we were in Europe we enjoyed every moment of it and uh, it's such a special time Europe when, when you're doing well it, you know yeah. it's a killer when it doesn't go so well but you know like the final but it's it's great to be in Europe isn't it and uh, to be part of that and just enjoy it mate enjoy it while we can exactly. and uh, hopefully we get through and if we don't it's not the end of the world yeah but it's not going to be decided on you know Thursday night let's put it that way it's yeah. not going to be decided then. You know, your nerves are going to be bad up in that game. Wait to the second leg. Mm. <laughs> Let's see how your nerves are. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, negative. What does she call you? Negative Nelly, is it? Yeah. Like, I'm um, always worried. I'm always yeah, worried mate, about that. I'm the same. I'm not, not I understand. Yeah. That's right. But it, it is enjoyable being in Europe, isn't it? And, uh, and, and we've done well. We've done well to be where we are. Exactly. So, um, but yeah, that's it, man. Um, you know, me and Kieran will sit down again, whether it's after the game at some point. But yeah, um, we will reconvene. And yeah, everybody that watched, thanks for tuning in. And we will see you soon. Goodbye. Bye-bye.